Hello again. It's good to be back with you. Today I want to talk about something pretty basic, but something that uh, my students ask about quite a lot, and that's mass units. Okay, now mass units are, are uh, pretty much at the core of dynamics, physics, engineering, all that kind of thing. And the easiest way to think about them, I think, is to think about them in terms of Newton's law. Because when you start talking about, well, what is mass? You know, mass is this idea, well, it's the amount of stuff, but it's not really weight. You know, how do you think about that? Well, one way to do it is to say mass is just the uh, con multiplicative constant between acceleration and force. It's the constant of that relates force and acceleration. That's one way to think about it. And that, I think some physicists think about it that way. And uh, another is that you can think of mass as the resistance to acceleration. Let's say you've got a, a fixed amount of force, maybe a thruster on a little rocket or something, and um, you've got uh, you'll, you'll, the amount of acceleration you get will depend on how much mass you've got. Let's say out in space somewhere there's a rocket and it's a far away from the gravitational fields of suns or planets or whatever, and it's got a, ro a thruster on the back of it pushing with a fixed amount of force. Well, the more massive that body is, the slower it's going to accelerate, the less acceleration it's going to experience. So mass is, but you can think of it as resistance to acceleration. Whole lot of mass, lots of resistance to acceleration. Not much mass, not much ex resistance to acceleration. So that's not bad. Now there's basically two units, at, uh, two systems of units in the world right now. The, uh, the big one, of course, is SI. This is metric. Okay. And it's the uh, international system, or in French, it's system international. That's why it's called SI. Okay, so the unit of, of mass is the kilogram. Okay, if you want to think about this mathematically, you can say mass is force over acceleration. So uh, mass is going to be Newton second squared per meter if you want to, you don't usually write it out that way because the def definition of a unit is a kilogram meter per second squared. So we're, we're kind of going, uh, hitting it backwards, but that's what that is. Um, and, and by far this is the one everybody uses. Now because I'm, I'm doing this in the United States, um, I was raised on the imperial system and that's the one that the United States still uses. It's the, the United States I think is the only country in the world that still uses it. It needs to go but it's not going to quickly anyway. Um, this is imperial. And I actually checked online and it was also called the British Gravitational System. I hadn't heard about that, but uh, I have the Googles in my pocket, so I was able to check it out. Um, so the imperial system obviously came out of England. This is the slug, okay? Even people raised in the United States struggle with the concept of a slug. What's a slug? Well, it's an imperial unit, so you expect it to be like 146, I don't know, hogs heads per cubic fortnight or something, but it's just a consistent unit. It is a pound second squared per foot. Okay? Pounds, feet per second squared. So you get a pound second squared per foot. That is the consistent units. These are what we would call consistent units. If you're working in newtons, seconds, and meters, so a force, a time, and a distance, you get a kilogram. If you were working in pound, pound, seconds, and feet, okay, which in my country that we do a lot, you get a slug. All right. Um, now these are the consistent units. Now, there's one other, well, I, should, I should say, there is one other consistent unit here that I actually had to work in early in my career. I spent years working with this mass unit, okay, the slinge, okay, and this is kind of a made-up name, but we used it, okay. I used to have to know the uh, density of aluminum in slinches per cubic inch, and I had that number memorized. I used it all the time because the uh, mathematical descriptions of the systems we were working in were pound, second, inches. Okay, well this is only pound, second, and feet. If, that, if your set of units, your force is pounds, your time is seconds, and your distance is inches, not feet, you get the slinch. 
This is a pound second squared per inch. Now I'm going to draw a line right there. Above this line, those are the units that people typically use. Below the line is the units either we don't use or shouldn't use. Okay? I'll even put quotes around that. You won't see that very often. But in finite element models, if the structure was de defined in pounds, seconds, and inches as ours were, that's the consistent mass unit. Okay, here be dragons. Don't do that. The last one is, uh, I guess I'll, I'll put that in there. Pound, second, inches is the consistent unit. The last one is the pound mass. Okay? If you find yourself working in pound masses, pounds mass, whatever you call that, mistakes are being made. Do not do this, okay? I don't allow my students to do it because you screw up a lot. You get the wrong answer a lot. If you work in pound masses, which is called, it actually has a name, it is the English engineering system that gave you that. If you think this is a kludge, that's worse, right? In this, F doesn't equal MA anymore. Oh, yay. All right? In this, you have to divide A by G. Now, if you're willing to do that, you can get this to work, okay? But, really, you want, you want to work in a system where F doesn't equal MA anymore. Go ahead, I guess. Um, but uh, a pound mass is the mass that one pound of weight would uh, correspond to. I mean, I see why they do it. But once you have to modify Newton's law to get it to work, you're just asking for problems. Um, occasionally, I will see a student come in and try to use pound mass. And the reason they're coming to me is they tried to use pounds mass and couldn't get the right answer. And they're almost, all, almost always off by a factor of 32.2 or something like that because that's the acceleration of gravity in the uh, uh, imperial system is 32.2 uh, feet per second squared. So there you have it. Mass units. Mass is resistance to acceleration. Right? Pretty simple way to think about it. There's, there are others, but that's not bad. By far, by far, the one you should be using is kilograms. All right? Now, the SI system is not perfect, I know. There's, it's got its own quirks but it's, it's the one we really have, have decided to standardize on. The imperial system, which is dying, uh, not quickly enough in my opinion, uh, the, the only uh, correct unit is the slug. Okay, this is an old time British thing from hundreds of years ago. If you're consistent, your, your units are pounds, seconds, and inches, you have to work in slinches. You don't have a choice, right? And that's a slinch. Um, you'll probably never see this. Uh, in, Hopefully you never see this. And if you decide to work in pound masses, pounds mass I guess would be the more correct way to say it, rethink it please. You're going to have to say this now. F doesn't equal MA anymore in, with pounds mass. All right? So there you have it. Hope this helps and I'll talk to you next time.